You know, moving to America was very tough. You know, the culture at the time wasn't as developed as it is today in the sense of acceptance. So I grew up very alone. It's been a real journey for me to kind of rediscover myself as well. What was the trigger for you to do that? Like what motivated you? Like what was the tipping point? I think the tipping point was realizing that I wasn't feeling good. I just knew I wasn't feeling good about myself overall. You know, I knew I didn't like the way that I looked. I knew I didn't like the way that I felt. I know I definitely didn't like the way my clothes fit. This is Maestro Minute, the show that discusses all things real estate, sharing interviews with the most successful people in the industry. Hear from their perspective and what they are doing to achieve success. Get exclusive tips on how you can also succeed in real estate. Maestro Minute is brought to you by Maestro Development. Here's your host, Nareg Muradian. Hey everybody, welcome to the Maestro Mindset. As the intro said, I'm your host, Nareg Muradian. Today, we're gonna focus about Maestro mentality, really what that is, how I came up with the formula for that and kind of guide you to that. I got a special guest today, Victor. Thanks for joining our podcast. Thank you, brother. Good I appreciate it. Nice to see you, Nalik. Today, uh, Victor's helped me out with developing the Maestro Minute. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity for you guys at home to hear what that's about. I mean, it really helps you achieve success, how to get through different obstacles, whether it's in your career or your life. Super exciting. So having that conversation, it gets pretty deep. So today we're uh, having some uh, Cuban cigars. We're having these uh, Hoyo de Monterey's that are... Uh, 2003, so 20-year uh, limited cigar. So let's get down to it. Let's go. So Victor, tell me and the team here a little bit about yourself, where you came from, what you're doing, kind of what you're about. Brief background, uh, was, my name is Victor Azule. I was born and raised in Paris, uh, France. Uh, my family migrated to New York in 2001, just a couple months before 9-11, which is crazy to think because who would have, uh, you know, who knows if uh, if the move would have been made, you know, had it been if we were th thinking about moving before after that, so to speak. So it's funny because at the age that I'm at now, you know, I kind of realized that that shaped a lot. The person that I became and the, the, the character that I hold and, and the person I'm becoming on a daily basis. So I uh, grew up in New York. You know, I was always in, uh, I, I, I went through, through some college. Uh, I never really finished college, but I am back in school now. So I am proud of myself for being back in school. But yeah, I worked a lot of my, my whole life was always based on customer service, hospitality, just helping others you know I think I grew up in a in, in a bit of a secluded way in the sense that coming from a different culture you know moving to America was very tough uh, you know the culture at the time wasn't as developed as it is today in the sense of acceptance so I grew up very alone I don't want to say lonely but alone you know so I just, I built a, per, a particular character, you know, going through that. Uh, I went through my own weight loss journey. I lost about a hundred pounds when I was, you know, in my late teens, early twenties. This is all in New York? This is all in New York. Uh, and that's what drove me to get into coaching and personal training, you know, which is where, where it started at, you know, in New York, Equinox Rockefeller Center, shout out to the people over there. So you started the Equinox in New York? In New York, wow. yeah. Uh, and my journey, over the years then took me out here to, you know, California. I now live in Long Beach, California. 2017, February 2017 is when I first moved out here, February 14, 2017. And then within two days, I was part of a startup gym in, uh, called Onyx today. It was called Iconics back then. Uh, it's called Iconics, my apologies. It was called Olympics back when we first opened. And it really is within the last, you know, the, the, the four years that I spent over there that I developed my coaching methods and my, my ideologies, uh, my approach to how I do my job as a personal trainer, as a coach, right? Which is why now I'm really, I, I tapped a little bit more into performance coaching, which is where I think you and I kind of met is when I realized how important it was to understand the psychology of why people not only behave the way they do, but why they put effort in certain things and why they lack effort in others. You know, and I think over the last now, it's been six years now that I've been in California. So it's been a real journey for me to kind of rediscover myself as well. You Let know, me so ask you this. please. You lost a hundred pounds. What was the trigger for you to do that? Like what motivated you? Like what was the tipping point? I think the tipping point was realizing that I wasn't feeling good. I just knew I wasn't feeling good about myself overall. You know, I knew I didn't like the way that I looked. I knew I didn't like the way that I felt. I know I definitely didn't like the way my clothes fit. And 
you know, I also, you know, I heard a lot growing up that, you know, I needed to stop eating as much. I needed to stop, you know, gaining so much weight, so on and so forth. And subconsciously also, you know, my, my uh, social circle was so small because it felt like people didn't want to accept me as a friend because I was a particular way compared to them. I was, you know, kind of standing out because I was the, f I was fat. I was loud. I was yeah. French. I was Jewish, you know, part within a community that's, you know, Italian, Catholic and, and nothing, I hold nothing against any of it. It's just a lot of times when you're young and you see someone that's different than you, a lot of times you're not going to want to accept it. It's not cool. Like, yeah. so that whole aspect of me kind of now being a little bit more on the outside, I was like, well, maybe it should be time for me to focus on myself. And that's how it's, it all started. I wanted to feel better about myself, about who I was, who I wanted to become. And that's really how the, the whole journey started, you know? So your mindset, that's what triggered your mindset. And then from that point, you, you made it all the way to become actually a physical trainer at a top-notch gym in New York, which is a pretty significant move. I mean, that's that's pretty freaking amazing to do that. Just losing the weight in itself is amazing. And then now you're training. During training, what kind of things did you learn about? Or now that you're kind of coaching, well, how did training help you? Like, what, what specific things do you focus on? Not really like the nuts and bolts of training, but more of like the mindset. You know, if we can get into more of that mentality. Yeah. Kind of elaborate on that. Well, I think for me, the mindset, again, it was very much the subconscious. The mindset was started out when I started really losing weight and it was more about pushing the limits. I wanted to find every limit that I thought I had and I wanted to break those limits. Uh -huh. You know, and I wanted to be the leanest I could ever be. I wanted to be the most muscular I could ever be. I wanted to be the most, in, you know, conditioned, well-conditioned that I could ever be, right? Mobile, all those things. And overall, and overall, these things became kind of my, uh, my compass in, in the aspect of how I train my clients and how I coach my clients. You know, how do you find the areas where you, my job as a coach today is to be able to see the potential in the person I'm working with. It's not to look at what they're lacking. It's not to look at, you know, what they're missing in their life. It's not looking at where they're fucking up or any of those things. It's, can I look at someone and see the true potential within them that they're incapable of seeing at that particular moment, maybe because of the stressors that they have going on in their lives, right? So my job is to bring that out of you. And the more I work with someone, the more I take the time to get to know a client of mine, the deeper we can get to the root of things. And once you get to the root of things, then you can start creating that mindset and the confidence that that person truly has within them that is, let's find out the limits. Let's figure out my, what my limits are because if there's a limit, it's meant to be broken. And my goal with each and every client of mine, I wanna find those plateaus and those limits that they, may feel they have in their life, whether it's losing weight, whether it's lifting heavier weights. And more importantly, it's whether they really are looking to improve their lives outside of the gym. Because, you know, if we think about it, our clients say they see us three to four times a week. That's four hours out of the week, right? Yeah. Say they're up 16 hours out of the, out of the day. If you do the math, those four hours are merely 5% of their week. So I know I'm not going to expect to change their life in four hours a week, but if you can install some nuggets in there, if you can plant some seeds within their, their mindset, within their approach of how they want to lead their lives, then from there, your job within those four hours a week is to water those, plant, those, those seeds every single time. Because the more you water them, the easier it is for them to see that they flourish from within. Not because things are going well outside of the, their world, but from within, they're like, holy shit, I feel confident about myself. I feel like you're right. I can do more than I'm telling myself I can do. And then little by little, they'll start doing more than they expect out of themselves. Not because they're aiming for that, but because it becomes, they become right. one with that idea and right. that mindset. That's, that's a great uh, point because I didn't start really going to the gym until my early 40s. And the reason I went Which to is the, when we met. Which is when we met, right? And the reason I, I did was because I realized that my, the first 40 years of my life, you know, I, I kind of took my physical health for granted. You know, I, I, I was in okay shape. You know, I was an athlete in high school. I always played sports, but I realized that I made a, a, a conscious uh, recognition that now I'm at a point where I need to continue to build 
not only my mindset, but my physical ability to match my mindset in order mm -hmm. to survive. It's almost like kind of a yin and a yang. You know, you can work so hard mentally and at work and drain yourself, but you got to also fill the bucket of it on the physical side, right? And together it goes well. And, you know, you do develop confidence, right? And you develop kind of a, almost like a, you feel good about yourself. It's really, I mean, aesthetics, I think, is kind of just a... a a secondary thing it's, it's a really, bonus inter yeah it's, it's a, a bonus. bonus internally you feel great you feel stronger you know I, I have four amazing kids i'm able to play with them and i want to hang out with them until the day i die and be active right thanks for tuning in to the maestro minute podcast make sure to rate this podcast if you found it helpful share it with a friend that could use it and follow us on all major podcast platforms the maestro minute powered by maestro development